Hey yo, diggity dog, it's time for another encyclopedia entry, dogs, or something. Um, today we're going to be talking about Rohrer und Klinger Altgoldgrün. It says gold grün here, but it's alt gold grün. Um, I got a sample, you know the sample, I, I talked about that last week, a sample of baggy from Chris. Uh, a lot of stuff in there, including alt gold grün, and I was quite happy with that because um, uh, this is an ink I get a lot of review requests for. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy that, that I've, I've got a sample of it now. Um, and I can't tell you anything about the bottle because I just have a, a, a sample, of course. Whoops, and I just dropped it, but that's all right. Um, I'm going to have a look at that ink. Uh, I, I kind of liked it. I think it was a pretty cool ink, I have to say. Um, and there's something else I'd like to share with you. And that is that this, not not this, but the writing bit of this video is the, um, uh, the first video I've recorded with this. I decided to uh, uh, get a better camera. Uh, so far, I, I mean, when I started doing my videos, uh, they they were just uh, I didn't do any writing recordings, and of course I quickly found out that that's not useful in fountain pen reviews. So I started to use a small pocket digicam on the video setting, which only had a 640 by 480 resolution, I think. Um, then I upgraded to another. Uh, a photo camera again which I put in the video setting which worked better had a much higher resolution but still wasn't ideal uh, and now I, I got me something yesterday that's um, um, full HD compatible etc so I hope uh, you appreciate that because I got some requests for a better camera well here you got it yeah like stuff so Enjoy. I hope this is going to be useful. I know this is an ink a lot of people are looking forward to see, so uh, have fun. I hope this is going to be useful, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we go with Rohr und Klinger Alt Goldgrün a much requested encyclopedia ink uh, I know a lot of people love this and I never got around to buying one uh, you know a bottle so it's nice that I have a sample of it now that was fine. How about a medium nib? Nice green, definitely some shading going on there. I think that's only going to be more pronounced now that we move to the B nib. I think the name Goldgrün is fairly well chosen. I'm not sure whether there is a very specific meaning, but literally it means, of course, gold green. Um, and it, it, it is, I mean, it is definitely green with some interesting sheen to it. Not Charlie's sheen, but I mean some type of interesting, nice thing going on. Very, very interesting color. And the final thing we need to do is uh, flexing. Always an interesting challenge. I 
I'm not slowing down here, I'm going full speed and the pen just keeps up and up and up and up. How about that? Is that excellent flow or what? Impressive. Okay. Maybe we should do a bit of fat writing with a really big pen. And before we do that, let's have a couple of passes. A nice olivey green. Okay. Let's too thin, but that's alright. Uh, it's not a calligraphy lesson. It is just a bit of fat writing. How are we doing in the field of drying? Well, it's still a bit wet near the bottom, but it's already drying up, so that's pretty good. Alright. Um, while we are waiting for this, we may as well have a look at some medium writing. And uh, I think we're pretty much ready for that second pass now. Yeah. One more pass is to follow. A bit later. I think we can can prepare. Is this dry? Yeah, that's pretty much dry now. Then I think we can first prepare ourselves for. That very sad moment of the bastard brush. And um, this is not entirely dry yet. So I think we can also have a look at the Tardif test. I know many of you are waiting for every week the brown benchmark. That was a pretty lame benchmark. Better. And now the benchmark and the Tardif test have evolved into one odd thing. How about that? Alright, just cleaning my fingers there and I'm ready to go. And I'm ready to go for a third pass before we forget. This is the demarcation point where Brown Benchmark and Tardif Test are separated. And uh, you know what? I think we can have a look at the eyedropper of death. Okay. And while all of those tests are drying, I think we can make a start with the scorecard. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Scorecard cleaning. Well, in all honesty, I have not yet cleaned this ink out of my pens. However, I have asked Ziza, who knows a lot about ink, uses a lot of ink uh, about her opinion, and she says it's really easy to clean. So I'm going to give this full marks there. Then we have bleed through, and obviously that's something we'll have to see a bit later. Uh, then there's color. Well, color is a um, an olive green, I think that's safe to say. Then we have shading. Uh, shading, I would say. Let's have a look at some of these these test results we've got going there. 
Um, first of all, we've got the writing, of course. Uh, I think the writing is uh, definitely showing us shading um, in the broader nibs. Even in the medium nib you can see shading and you in fact can even see shading in the very light touch with the fine nib. So this is one well shaded ink. Um, I'm just drawing a bit off here as I go along. Um, then we have the three passes test going from a non-saturated to a highly saturated nib also quite some shading going on there so I think it is safe to say that this is a very well shaded ink full marks then we have flow and flow is excellent uh, even with the the flex pen it just writes straight away no issues I'm, uh, I'm quite impressed by that then we have feathering we'll check that after the copying paper we have drying time well on rhodia paper that's a bit long but even here it seems to be pretty good um, it's not extremely fast drying me it's not the super fast drying type of ink right now I'd give that two so a middle score so it's definitely good and then we have waterproofness well if you thought we'd found the perfect ink, I don't think so, because the writing here is pretty much gone, especially in these bits, and I didn't use uh, more water than I usually do or anything. Um, <clears throat> and this fat writing is almost completely eradicated, so, I mean, you, st you still see a sort of a shady outline, but, but the ink is pretty much gone. Um, and look at this beautiful Tardif test, by the way. That's turned out very nicely. So, waterproofness. Um, I'm afraid it's uh, a low score. Alright, then I want to switch to some copier paper. And we'll go through all the motions yet again. Where's my little thing? Here we go. That's what she told me. Um, here we go. I'm going to turn this around. The bit I was writing on wasn't flat. You have this... Uh, this is somewhat bubbly and odd, and that didn't really help. Um, alright, and I've also put ink on the paper, but that's alright, that's alright. Altgold Grün. This is better. Alright. Because it seemed to skip, and it, it didn't do so on the Rodia paper. Um, now I want to know where my cap is. Oh, here we go. All right, then we'll have some medium writing. Alt gold grün. Uh, perhaps this is a good moment to stress that in German, when a umlaut, so these little dots, are added to a, uh, a vowel, uh, the sound actually changes, right? So if I were to write broad, this is Alt Gold Grun. Grun would be a different sound than Grün. You hear the difference? Now, a lot of uh, Anglo Saxon people use this word as in super, you know, like ultra or a lot, um, and they would often say that is uber cool or whatever, something like that. If you want to use the word, then it's uber, right? It's not uber. It would be uber if these dots were not there, but they are there, so it's uber. Just saying. All right. Now we have italic. <coughs> And I need a sip of tea, how about that? Ah, much better. 